Hurricane Barrel is expected to drench parts of the Texas Gulf Coast in the coming days. AP correspondent Jackie Quinn reports. A piece of metal twisting in the wind at a Cancun resort as Hurricane Barrel made landfall in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Power is out in many places. Four to eight inches of rain is expected to fall as the storm marches to the west-northwest. National Hurricane Center Director Michael Brennan says Barrel will weaken from crossing land but will likely regain hurricane strength over the Gulf of Mexico in the coming days. Heavy rainfall along the uh, northeastern Mexico, lower and middle Texas coast beginning late Sunday and into Monday. Rip currents will also be a threat. Hurricane barrels blame for nearly a dozen deaths as it tore through the Windward Islands earlier in the week. I'm Jackie Quinn. After 14 years in government, Britain's Conservative Party suffered a crushing defeat to Labor in Thursday's election. The party of Winston Churchill now faces an internal struggle for its sole and future direction. What's next for Britain after the election? And who is the UK's next Prime Minister, Keir Starmer? VOA Steve Miller spoke with Henry Ridgewell in London. Sir Keir Starmer, as he's known in Britain, is a figure uh, widely known, of course, because of the election campaign and because he's uh, led Labour since the resignation of Jeremy Corbyn. But perhaps his background is less known. He started off as a human rights lawyer. Uh, he was a Labour activist in his university and early 20s. Uh, in his later uh, legal career, he actually became uh, the chief prosecutor um, and uh, was responsible for prosecuting uh, high-profile crimes, including uh, terrorism, uh, uh, court cases here in Britain. VOA's Henry Ridgewell. For additional stories, visit voanews.com. This is VOA News. The U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights Friday called for vigilance this week after far-right groups made gains in recent European elections, most recently this week in France. VOA's Jeff Custer has more. Speaking to reporters in Geneva this week, U.N. Human Rights Commissioner Volker Turk called out narratives used by politicians that dehumanize migrants, asylum seekers, and others for political gain. France's national rally, for example, has made anti-immigration the centerpiece of its platform and has been criticized for racist and anti-Semitic comments in the past. Turk said such actions are warning signs that need to be heeded. We need to be very vigilant because especially history tells us, in particular in Europe, that the vilification of the other that the denigration of the other is a harbinger for worse to come. And yes, it's an alarm bell that we need to ring. Jeff Custer, VOA News. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban visited Moscow for a rare meeting by a European leader with Russian President Vladimir Putin and discussed peace proposals for Ukraine. The visit triggered condemnation from Kyiv and some European officials that he had no mandate for discussions for beyond bilateral relations. The visit came days after Orban made a similar unannounced trip to Ukraine where he met with President Volodymyr Zelensky and proposed that he consider agreeing to an immediate ceasefire with Russia. Kenyan President William Ruto on Friday proposed spending cuts and additional borrowing in roughly equal measure to fill a nearly $2.7 billion budget hole caused by his withdrawal of planned tax hikes in the face of nationwide protests. Jillian Kitchener from Reuters reports. According to Ruto, austerity measures will include the end of 47 state corporations, a 50% reduction in the number of government advisors, along with the removal of budget lines for the president and deputy president's spouses. I believe these changes will set out our country on a trajectory towards economic transformation. Following the speech, Ruto hosted a live audio forum on X meant to engage with young people. He faced sharp questioning about police brutality, alleged abductions by state security agents, and economic policy. Many protesters are still calling for the president to resign. Jillian Kitchener from Reuters. The United States and the European Union are welcoming Belarus's release of some political prisoners freed since the country's authoritarian president earlier this week promised to release those seriously ill who are behind bars and those swept up in connection on the severe crackdown on mass protests in 2020. The number of released prisoners on Friday reached 16. Lukashenko has suppressed opposition and independent media since coming to power in 1994. The human rights organization, Viasna, said on Friday that more than 1,400 remain behind bars.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.